When Stockton first opened, it couldn't open without a sewage treatment facility because there was no regional system that we reached the campus. So they built an on-site facility and it was supposed to be temporary until the major county system came through. So they would take all of the sewerage from the buildings, uh, treat it, aerate it, uh, have some of it settle, and then they'd chlorinate it. And then they would take the liquid and spray it out through irrigation pipe into the forest. Uh, so my job was to supervise the whole project and uh, look at the changes in the water quality and the water table beneath the spray field. It did a lot of damage. The thing about plants is that they'll come back so that you had really an exchange of plants from uh, natural forest to invasive uh, small plants that came in. Uh, one of the things that happened was you were supposed to store the effluent during the time when the weather was bad. And they had no way of storing this stuff, so they sprayed it anyway. So they sprayed winter, summer, and what happened was you built up um, frost along the base of the vegetation, so you'd have a really icy surface there. And that killed all of the pine trees. So the pine trees took a, a real hit. A lot of the shrubs, the blueberries and huckleberries, take a long time to come back. And the invasives are a lot faster. So they got replaced with a lot of water-loving invasive species. In particular, one of the big ones was Phragmites, which you would see on the edge of a swamp. And so what had been an oak pine upland forest was turning into lakeside vegetation because every day in the spray field was a rainy day. What happened was when the spray field was working, um, the plants were coming in fast and taking advantage of it. And as soon as the spray field got shut off, uh, all of those died because there was just no way to support them. There was not, the natural environment that changed back. So what's now there is basically just clearings and vegetation that fills in clearings and pine barrens. Environmental awareness and historical awareness to me is a similar thing because you're really talking about how people fit into the world around them. And to me, it's important to appreciate the natural environment we live in and the historical development of it. Uh, it's all a part of us. And I think the more we feel that way, uh, the more we will defend the things that are important to us and preserve our culture and our heritage. <laughs>